So today we're gonna um, dye some feathers. Uh, I've got a fly that I want to dye, it calls for crimson hackle. Um, I don't have any, so I'm going to just make a small little video to see, you know, show you guys how it's done. Well, how I do it. It's not the right way. It's not the wrong way. Uh, like all my videos, everything I do, it's what works for me. Uh, so what we're going to need is, like I said, I need crimson. So that is vineyards crim crimson over there. I've got a suspicion that it might be just a little bit too light for, it, for my liking. So I'm going to add a little bit of burgundy to it. This is just normal dye that you buy from a, that I buy from a superstore. It's not expensive. This in rands, we in South Africa we use rands. The currency is that's probably about thirty rand. Um, citric acid. We're gonna need baby shampoo to wash the grease out the feathers and then the feathers I'm going to be using is well you've got two options um, I, I never buy colored or dyed feathers I used to but then you get out of the hundred in the stack you maybe get about five that you can use so I go buy this cheap hackle string on eBay and pluck off the ones that I need uh, so when you want what you're looking for you're looking for those little Christmas tree shapes Feathers. And that's actually maybe still a little bit too wide. So that's option one. Uh, so after I pluck them, after I pull them off the, the ribbing there, I tie them up with the little bundles using some cotton. And then it's just it's a lot easier to sort out and to dye and then just put it straight into my hackle book. Option two, you can buy a white cape, a cock cape. This is uh, quite an old one. <laughs> I don't know, probably about 30 years old. And it's going to need to be washed, so and then also tied into a little bundle, and yeah, put it in the in the dye box. What I would suggest is maybe just get yourself a little dye box. I've got all my dye in here. Um, everything I need, I've got jackards in there. I've got vineyards, and then obviously all the neat ones at the top here yeah, is what I bought from the pharmacy. And I've got every single colour that I need. It's a lot cheaper for me. Um, I'm not selling my flies, so it doesn't need to have the top of the range dyes. Besides, it's like you can see how many dye selections I've got here, how many different colors. There's more over there. And then obviously my citric acid in there. Yeah. Okay, so like I said, first step, I'm gonna wash these hackles in some, just some baby shampoo over there. And then get ready. Okay, so I've just given these a, a quick bath, just run them through my fingers. Uh, another thing I would definitely, definitely suggest is get your own little dish towel. The missus is never happy when you leave a towel full of dye marks. So get your own one and uh, yeah, you won't be all that. Okay, so um, what I've done now is I've taken the, the colour burgundy that I'm going to add to the crimson. And I've um, put some in a bit of water because you're not going to add the powder to the water directly. So the main colour is, is crimson. Uh, like I said, I suspect it's going to be a little bit too light. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to top it up with a slightly darker burgundy over here until I get to the colour that I want. So in the meantime, I'm waiting for this to... You don't want this boiling. It, you don't want it to see it bubbling like you would make a cup of coffee with. It, it just needs to just prickle up. Uh, you know, the feathers are quite delicate. You don't want it to, to burn. Uh, once that gets going, I'm going to add my, my citric acid, I'm going to add my, my dye, um, just a little bit at a time. I'll probably end up using about, not even that much, a little bit. And um, yeah, I'll just add the burgundy until I get to the colour that I want. Okay, so yeah, we've got, I ended up using about a quarter of that little spoon, that measuring spoon. And yeah, I can see it's definitely too light. I think maybe they've just labelled it wrong. Uh, they gave me scarlet instead of crimson. Um, it, it doesn't happen often, but that, I don't know. I don't know how that happened. Okay, so you can see it's not bubbly, it's not boiling up. It's, you don't see these big bubbles coming up. If I keep quiet, you can actually just hear it. Okay, so that's, that's what you want. Um, that is maybe getting a little bit too hot. So I've turned it down just in time. Yeah, I'm going to have to turn it down a bit more. Okay, it's a little bit better. I've turned it down. Um, I'm going to introduce the feathers. Okay, 
and you want to keep those fibers moving. You want the dye to go into all the fibers. Add some of this burgundy. See, this is what I mean by it. Just going to add a little bit at a time. A little stir, a little bit of color. A little bit too light, so I'm gonna add quite a bit. Just keep adding until the happy with the colors can be too right. Okay, so you can see I've added quite a bit of that burgundy color in there, and that's actually the color that I am looking for. Um, I forgot to mention if you don't have citric acid, you can use vinegar, uh, it does stink, and that's why I like using citric acid. I'm just gonna let this sit in here for about three, four, maybe five minutes max. Um, I don't even think it will need that long. I'm gonna take it out and rinse it off and have a good look at the color. Okay, so it's been in there for about five minutes now. And as you can see, what I mean by the temperature of the water is not boiling, but it's just like a little bit of a simmer. So what I'm gonna do now is I've got a glass jar on the side here with clear water. It's hot water. You don't wanna shock the protein or the, or the fibers. I'm just gonna dunk it in there. And you can also have a good look at the colour. And here's my feathers. Okay, so what I've done now is I've, um, I've actually added a little bit of willite in the solution in the water in there. And I'm going to leave it in there for about 20 minutes. You, know, you don't have to do it, I've just always been doing it, um, no particular reason, I just believe that uh, your feather will be nice and soft. Um, another suggestion if you are going to dye, uh, instead of wasting all the dye, put everything you want to dye together. Uh, if you want to, feathers obviously go with the feathers, so do your, if you want to do your married wing flies or if you want to do some swan feathers, put them all in the pot um, and dye them all together so you don't waste the dye. Uh, if you do have moe or pig's wool or anything like that to dye. Once you're done with the feathers, uh, take it out and throw your, your pig's wool in there and, or whatever other fibers you need to, to dye. Because that needs to go higher, the temperature needs to go a little bit higher for, for that type of, for the wool. And um, yeah, that way you won't waste your, your dye. Right, so the possibilities if you, if you dye your own stuff, it's endless. I mean, like the color schemes you can come up with. Um, all of this is, this is alpaca that I've dyed. Um, you can see all the different colors in there and then my suggestion is if you do do something like this just write to the bottom what it is so this is the hot orange uh, it's from jacquard the j and then the a is just the alpaca uh, it's just for me to remember and you can see i've got a little card at the bottom there for all the different colors that i've dyed who the color that i use is jacquard vineyards or the the pharmacy that i use is called Discam locally and then i just write to the bottom it's a Discam brand um, let's see, there's burgundy, the color that I just used, the D there for Discam, the A is for alpaca, and the colors. So if you ever do need to dye your colors again, if you run out of a color, then at least you know what you're going to dye. Um, so that's how I store those, just quick and handy in my box. Um, the other way I do is business card holders. You can see this is all my, my Moe, the M is for the Moe's. And then when I do buy from the, from the dealers, I leave it, I don't use it, because then I can use it as a color reference, you know, just as a color chart. So this is from, from John, uh, Feathers MC, brilliant stuff, uh, all the Moe. Um, yeah, so those are the, that. And then for my feathers, I've got all my turkey one section. Uh, just yeah, This is an old CD case that I use, and you just put in the plastic sleeve, and right on there the colors that you're using. So that's a disc in the Protea Red, and like I said, the colors, it's endless, so you can use it. I hope all of this helps, um, let me know what you guys think. Okay, so here's the final product. Um, so like I mentioned in, in the part of the, the video, whenever I do buy 
from the, the locals or well, from the suppliers. Uh, I like to keep sections or the whole piece. And then I just write the color scheme. So whenever you're looking for, when, you, when you're reading a recipe and it calls for a certain color, at least you can reference it back to that color. Uh, so this I've had for about three years now. Uh, and there's my dark crimson. Color's not that great, the lighting over here. But um, you, know, you can see it's fairly close. Just by mixing those two colors together, you can get your the color that you want. Just keep on adding and adding until, until you reach your, your desired color. And there's a normal color crimson. And that will go quite nicely in my packle book. Thanks for watching, guys.